Welcome back to my workshop. Now, today is the second part of my dog crate build uh, in today's video. Hopefully, um, you've already seen the first one where I make the crate itself. Uh, this one is going to be making the cabinet on the side. So the first thing I've got to do is go and get some material before the shop shuts. Right, so the basic design is fairly simple. Uh, basically, I've got my cage here. I've got my wooden top, which is going to be made out of scaffold boards. And here's the cabinet that I've got to make on the side. Uh, I'm going to use 18 mil MDF. Design of the cupboard is just going to be 18 mil MDF all the way around uh, a flush door. And then I'm probably going to put some bits of trim on the front of the door to make it look like the rest of the cage. Went to Wix and I had to cut the MDF in the car park, uh, just a rough size so I can get it back here and put it on my table saw. Right, so what I need to do now is take these measurements and cut my MDF to size and then start putting it together. Right, so as usual, uh, I don't really have the room in the workshop to start wielding around big lumps of uh, MDF. Uh, so I've got it stored just in the hallway here. Okay, and um, what I'll do is I'll take it one piece at a time and he cut you on the table saw. Uh, right, quick change of plan. Uh, I was gonna cut all these on the table saw, even though I've cut the material down to size big enough to get in the car. Uh, I can't actually cut it in here because I can't come back far enough because there's too much stuff in the way. I can't go forward because my sled hits the other cupboards. Uh, I can't get it under the bench any further. Basically, it's too big. Uh, I'm going to have to use the track saw. So let me get the track saw out and then I can start cutting. Right, so that's my main parts of the uh, cupboard cut. Uh, it was such a pain. Workshops, too small. Anything bigger than a square foot is just impossible to move around. But what I've got now, I have my top, I have my bottom. They're the same size. I've got my inside back. I've got a side another side and my door okay so what i've got to do now is try and clear some space and i can start assembling this now i think i'm gonna even though it's mdf i'm probably going to use uh, pocket hole screws and some glue uh, so what i've got to do is try and clear some space so i can assemble this thing right so you wouldn't normally use pocket holes for something like this uh, using mdf but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it anyway because it's quick and it's easy. Uh, now there's my back panel. So this would be up this way normally. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pocket holes from the back panel into the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same on the top. Okay, so what we need to do is quickly mark where we're putting our pocket holes and then I'll get my pocket hole jig out and we start drilling some pocket holes. Right, so this is my pocket hole jig. Uh, I've quickly screwed it to the bench here just so it's nice and solid. I've done a full video on this, but if 
you want to see that, then look at this video here. But just a quick setup. Uh, all my material is 18 mil thick. So I get a piece of 18 mil thick. I adjust this plunger so it can clip onto there like that. It can hold it solid. Uh, then what I have to do is adjust my drill bit. So it's just at the right height and this collar stops it. And then what I can do is I'll put my drill in here. And then when I drill into it, up to the collar, remove it. And it gives me one of these, which is a pocket hole. Then I can put a screw in like this. So when I screw it together, it comes out through the middle there, so I can join two bits together. Uh, let me just quickly show you that. Okay, so I've got my pocket hole here, a screw goes in here. I can put that against the piece I'm going to join it to. Okay, so that screws in there, it joins there, and you can't see any of the joints apart from this bit here. Right, so what I've got to do now is put pocket holes in this and this and this and this and this and this. Let's get pocket hole in. Right, to use these pocket holes, uh, here's my little pocket holes here that I've just made. Uh, here's my piece I'm joining it to, this one here. All I've done is quickly put a big long clamp across the top just to hold it in place while I put some screws in. Now there should be some proper screws for uh, pocket holes, but I haven't got any, so I'm gonna have to use these ones. Uh, and the difference is on a proper pocket hole screw, uh, this shoulder here is flat. Uh, but I'm going to have to use these for now. Uh, what I'm going to do is quickly show you how I screw it together. Uh, but then I'll have to take it apart and put some glue on it. But just to show you, if you insert a screw into the hole. Okay, that's the top and the bottom on. Uh, all I've got to do now is do the same for the sides. Uh, a little bit of glue and then some pocket holes. So that goes on there like that. And then screw in the pocket holes. Right, so now the cabinet is uh, is the right shape. I haven't done the door yet or any of the internals and it's not painted. Uh, but what I've got to do is figure out how I'm going to get this attached to this, okay? I've got to make sure that the top is flush because obviously there's wood going to be going on the top. Uh, and this is new, so I don't really want to drill into this, okay, just in case. So let me show you the solution I've come up with. Okay, so somehow this cabinet 
which is now very heavy, has got to mount flush against there. Okay, I don't really want to screw through the metal into here. So what I'm going to do is uh, move that out of the way because it's very heavy. Okay, these fixing points here, the bolts, uh, I could use those. Now, obviously this is quite heavy, so what I need is lots of support. Now, each one of these, what I'm going to do is use a little bracket that goes on here. Then I can bolt this to the cage and then screw through the cage into the cabinet. Now, where do I get these? Let me show you. Okay, so what we've got is this little L bracket. Okay, there's a whole one side. It's all off center, but can't help that. Uh, that can go through the bolt, or the bolt can go through that. And then two screws can go through here. These are countersunk uh, into the cabinet. Now this started off life as one of these, which is just a little L bracket. Uh, okay, I think these were from Aldi's. Uh, they were quite cheap. So what I've got to do is make this hole bigger to about six mil, and then cut this off uh, and round it off because we don't want any sharp edges in the cage, okay? So you start off with that and you end up with that, okay? So all I've got to do is I've got to do six of those. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my angle grinder to cut it off and then stick it in the drill press to actually make the hole bigger. Right, so I've now had to move it over here because obviously it's now too wide to go across the workshop. Uh, what I'm going to do now is put on the door. Uh, I've quickly screwed some hinges on. They're only cheap ones from Wix, uh, but I'll show you what I've done and then we'll fit the door. Okay, so I'm just using this kind of uh, concealed hinge. Uh, it comes in two parts. Obviously, this part mounts to the cabinet. This part mounts to the door. Okay, uh, so I've put one of those here and one of them here about 100 mil from the top and 100 mil from the bottom uh, so that's the type of hinges i've used i've already drilled the door and put the hinges in they're ready to go so it should be a case of just putting the door on so let's see how that goes Right, so it's been a bit of a design change. Uh, the customer now wants this door, instead of just being plain like this, they want it to be a shaker style door. 
so rather than start from the beginning, what I'm going to do is just basically cut the center section out, uh, route it all out on the back, put in infill uh, to turn it into a shaker style door. I won't go into too much detail. I'll just get on with it and then get it done before they change their mind again. So this has been drying for about a quarter of an hour now. Uh, while I leave that to finish drying, uh, they want two shelves in the cupboard. Uh, so I'm going to cut my remaining MDF for two shelves. <laughs> Right, so that's the door almost done. Uh, it's been changed into a shaker style door. It's not a proper shaker style door, but it looks like it. Uh, the shelves are now cut. I've put the pins in to support the shelves and I've also put a couple of little divots here to locate on the pins. So when the shelf goes in, it locates. <laughs> Right, a bit hard to believe, but I've had a bit of a clear up. Uh, basically, I vacuumed all of the uh, components here. So I've got the, the main box here, and I've got the door and the two shelves here. These are all ready for paint now, but what I've got to do is wait for the, uh, the dust to settle in the workshop. Because if we look this way without tripping over everything, uh, if we look at our little meter here, okay, it's still showing it's a little bit dusty. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be turning my little extractor on. Uh, probably leave that for an hour or so. Uh, I've vacuumed everything else. I need the dust to settle down. Uh, I've got the paint in from outside because it's about minus three outside at the moment. Uh, using this stuff, which is the uh, Leyland MDF primer. Uh, I should give the cabinet and the door and the two shelves a coat of that. Then a D-nib, then maybe another coat, and then some top coat. Okay, but that's all tomorrow. I'm gonna to leave the dust to settle now and uh, maybe go and have a cup of tea. Right, I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Thank you. 
Right, so I've primed everything now. I've primed the cabinet and uh, the two shelves and the door. Uh, what I'm going to do now is give them a quick denib with some very fine paper uh, and an abrasive pad, and then I can give it a top coat. Right, so that's all the denibbing done now, ready to put a top coat on. Uh, you can probably hear a ticking in the background, that's my heater, because it's so cold outside, the paint would never go off, so I've got the heater going. Uh, now, top coat, I'm going to use this, which is like an emulsion. Now, I've never done this before. Dulux, uh, walls and ceiling, pebble shore, matte. Now, they want it to match their walls. Um, now, they reckon that this will be fine on this cabinet. Uh, so the customer's always right, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so let's get rolling. Right, what I want to do now is get the shelves in, get the door on, get all the furniture on the door. Uh, I won't put the wheels on yet because it'll make it difficult to transport. So let me get on with that. Okay, so look, I've got a space in my workshop. Uh, right, I've taken it apart as much as I, I can. Uh, what I'm gonna do is try and see if I can get it all in the car. Uh, at the moment, it's in the hallway, ready to go in the car. Uh, then I've got to take it to where it's going and then reassemble it. So uh, hopefully it fits in the car. Right, but that's it for tonight. Let's do the rest tomorrow.